Okay, you go back to sleep. Okay. <laughs> Ouch! She just jumped off me. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was so say, we just did the same. So. I was gonna say, Carl, you just have your cold open, but um, apparently we can't do a cold open, and I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry, my cat scratched me with a bump for me. <laughs> what is going on, everyone? Welcome to Litter Lessons, episode 222. Carter's back, and within seconds, he already messed up my first attempt at an intro. It wasn't How hard. are you, buddy? I, I, I'm, I'm vibing. Yeah, Carter's got the easy job every week of just ruining your intro. It's it's really not that That's hard. literally what I'm here for. <laughs> it's ru ruined the intro, and then as Jay and I talk about the Pokemon that, and the teams that actually matter to the listeners going to NAIC, you're like, this team has a, it was a stunt tank and we'll a get Lapras. there. We, we will get there. Those are um, two separate teams, thank you. Oh, uh, I got, I got one sorry. for Carter, though. I'm yeah. sending it in the chat right now. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, this so, one's this one's dope. <laughs> so we are back. Uh, we have two tournaments to cover. Um, Ooh. I'm a bad influence. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it. I, I am not looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, we have two tournaments to cover. We have both. Uh, Los you Angeles. asked me to come back. I want yeah. that to be known. Because <laughs> we need all three of us. It, it, it does feel empty when it's just two. It has to be three. It's a little more chaotic this way, but we get it through. Third time's a charm. We were talking about both Los Angeles Regionals and Bologna Regionals. Los Angeles occurred last week, and uh, Bologna just finished up today uh, in Italy. Uh, the last regional and special event in North America and Europe leading up to this upcoming week's finale before Worlds, uh, North American Internationals in New Orleans. So I think we should go in chronological order and jump to the last event in north america before naic that being give, give me a second why it, is this it's la uh, los yeah, angeles I, I know i know it's la so why do you stop talking because i'm trying to pull it up the land of it doesn't Lakers, make for a very good audio Clippers, experience there the we go Dodgers, with, with land los of angeles. angels land of sparks los angeles <laughs> Did you say the Rams? Uh, no, I did not say the Rams. I was focused on basketball and baseball for some reason. I don't watch either. <laughs> I mean, the Angels, they don't even play in Los Angeles. They're in Anaheim. Uh, Just yeah, like Disney. I guess. Just they, like they, Disney. Are, I, they are still you could, the LA Angels. <laughs> you, could, you could tell me that, and I, I couldn't tell you the difference between the two on the map. Like, it's... Yeah. It's fitting that we do bring up Disney, though, because uh, this was uh, this event was a uh, red like a Mickey Mouse event. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, there was a venue-wide Wi-Fi connection shortage that pretty much stopped this event from running for like about three or four hours. Uh, they actually had to cut day one short after round seven and finish rounds eight and nine first thing sunday morning so um if you didn't drop everyone made day two at this event and uh, then of course after round nine things were cut down to x and twos and they finished from there um honestly i'm kind of happy we didn't record this event last week because i don't think it ended until like 9 30 10 o'clock eastern we, we would have we would have been up at midnight recording this um, i think i was still awake yeah, yeah well, you know, nah, not on not. Sunday. I wasn't. Not on <laughs> Sunday. I wasn't. Would not have been fun. Um, and we're just going to dive into the first team, the championship team. Oh, I have so much spice to talk about. We'll let you. Let's talk about the spice of the first place team, Montana Mott. Congratulations on winning. Congratulations on your world's invite. Um, Jay, this team is near and dear to your heart because going back to our restricted retiering. While you did agree that Caloric Shadow wasn't an S tier Pokemon, you said that uh, calling it a fraud was um, fraudulent in itself. I said, uh, take just wait, lap, King. just wait. All right, you got, you just got to wait it out. That's what I said. And and look at this: first place, Los Angeles, Montana Mott, the best player not shown on stream, stream until he was shown on stream, and, and continued to then then be the best player, best player on stream as well. Uh, this team is, you know, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty standard. It's, I believe, 
the exact Wolfie team that he used in the like very very early meta, like one of the the uh, the Hawaii Invitational where he like that is his, his trip to uh, to Hawaii on it. And uh, I think the only major difference is that the Terra type on Cali S was Ghost on that, and now it is is Terra Fairy. Yeah, uh, which I, is. I, I was going to say the other difference would be, um, I think Wolf had Moonblast over Heal Pulse on the Clefairy, mm -hmm. and then the Cali S held Sash for Wolf, and the Urshifu held Scarf for Wolf. Yeah, but it's it's. Generally the same six. Same six, same moveset for the most part. Um, yeah. This is kind of the Kali S that we've been seeing in terms of move slots and Terra type. The item has been extremely flexible, as we'll see when we get to uh, Bologna later. Um, but yeah, this team is really, really cool. It has a lot of awesome options. Um, I really like the Clefairy plus Kali S with like that balanced trio that we see across the board. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, with Fake Out and with Clefairy, you have a bunch of different options to get your Caloric Shadows set up. Um, Terra Fairy Draining Kiss is nuclear after a nasty plot and heals up the majority of your health on most occasions. You have uh, additional healing from Rillaboom's Grassy Terrain, a really good offense from Urshifu to supplement the Caloric Shadow, um, and then Tornadus for additional speed control. It's definitely a little bit of a protect the the king uh archetype in that you're trying to put all your eggs in the cali shadow basket but it's kind of why it works so well because you have such great support around it to enable it and and to protect it that um it allows it to just really snowball so quickly um like i said you just had to wait on it the meta had to be right for it and uh the meta is certainly right for it right yeah, I definitely agree with what you're saying with uh, the meta call. Going into this event, all anyone was able to talk about in terms of successful restricted were the fighting types, Coridon, um and Zamazenta. Even Zacian was getting a bit of hype of, hey, maybe Z this could be a Zacian event sleeper, like as like a sleeper mon. And Calor Shadow was never bad. It's just that at the time the format was so turtle heavy. And so Maridon heavy, and even like Kyogre heavy to start, and everyone was packing on an Incineroar, and then another normal, and like another normal type, and another dark type, and they, everything that could have just off like dark type coverage or off ghost type coverage just had it. And when we were like watching Indianapolis, for example, multiple times that weekend we saw on stream where the Caloric Shadow player couldn't bring their restricted because there was so much hate for it you might as well have been bringing a 3v4 and as the metagame shifted away from calyrex people have started using these dark types um or these anti-calyrex techs uh a lot less which led it to get back into a position where it's going to be where it is a insanely successful pokemon uh, i know one off kilter thing with montana's team uh, that I've heard from some people was that Montana didn't we didn't put any investment in special attack or speed or very little in that it was pretty much all bulk invest on the caloric shadow. The idea being that your base speed's so high that even without the invest you're, you're still out, able to outspeed a vast majority of the format unboosted. And once you get that nasty plot, you throw in the spell tag, you throw in your first Grimnade boost, and you know, when you get to plus three, plus four, how much does your special attack invest actually matter? Um, especially when you throw on the spell tag on top of it. Your multipliers just become so outrageous that, the, and the number becomes so big for your special attack stat that the extra points of investment really don't matter. And in this protect the castle sort of variant, your ability to stay alive and get to plus four plus five plus six on whether it's multiple nasty plot boosts or multiple grimnay boosts is more important than just getting that super quick kill but you're out of the game at plus two instead of staying in at plus five so yeah, i think the, that's was a sign of what was to come in the following week 
the stat spread on like the Calyrex Shadow reminds me a lot of the Chiyu's on the uh, the regulation F like a uh, Tornadus Glamora teams. Mm. Um, I believe a lot of them were choice specs uh, the Chiyu's on those on yeah. those teams, choice and they basically forward. were just like fully invested into bulk and uh, also you know coincidentally that was similar to how like early format choice specs uh flutter main was run as well which obviously has a lot of uh si similarities to caloric shadow except this thing's faster it's stronger it's bulkier it doesn't need um, a booster energy it doesn't need a booster energy it you know has nasty plot which is like getting two choice specs on it uh in one turn it's 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 still really really strong and yeah. I said everyone was sleeping on it, and I'm right. I yeah. was right. <laughs> Caught me down in some NyQuil. Uh, the next place, second place, um, it was a horse versus horse finals with Ryan Haig running a relatively standard um, Calyrex Ice team. I think this is just the Calyrex Ice balance that we expect to see. I think the yeah, interesting... Nothing... Nothing overly exciting here. Uh, I, taunt on the Ensign is is cool. Yeah, it Taunt over Will-O-Wisp. Uh, I think, like, being Booster instead of Assault Vest on the Raging Bolt is interesting. Um, and then you have No Protect Pelipper with Helping Hand. Usually it's Protect over that Helping Hand. And then Coaching over Aqua Jet or Ice Spinner on the Urshifu. That's also not something that you really see a lot of the time. Um, so... Definitely some little, like, ways to twist it up. But in general, this is a relatively standard team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, this coaching on the Scarf set has been pretty pretty uh, popular as of late. Like, yeah. especially on these teams, because you can go and coach into your Kali Eye and, and set Trick Room. Um, or you can just coach and start clicking Glacial Lance. Um, Calyrex Ice is on a little bit of a decline right now for sure um i think it's just a little bit one note like we kind of said early on which is why we stopped it from being an s tier and i think that a lot of people are catching on to that in the same way that people are catching on to it with caloric shadow um but yeah i do uh i do like this this six uh pokemon yeah in general with caloric ice it's um it does the thing it's the balancey trick room, but not a hundred percent necessarily needs to be in trick room sort of play play style. Um, I think what sets it apart is it's so consistently good at what it does, and that's why it's been throughout this entire format of all the ebbs and flows of the other restricted Pokemon. Calyrex Ice has just stably been top three the entire time. Um, be and because you know what it's doing, and it's the only Mon that really does it in this format, and it does it super well. Um, mm -hmm. But it does lead to a standardish team. Uh, this team here, uh, third place, Keon Campbell. This is not a standard team. This is the uh, the first real amazingization finish we've seen, and um, that's a uh, that's not a dark type taunting cat that we're used to. That's a dark type taunting fox in the bottom left hand corner and umbreon namesake of the umbreon theorem here, Which we, here he is and third place we were right about that one all of us were right about that one all of us were so, very right about that one on the scale of you know cat to dog where does umbreon fall it's definitely a fox um, no no cat to dog cat to dog well dogs are foxes fox. are definitely more dog like they're definitely right? no, they're, they're okay. a dog, so it's it's a dog. Okay, I just wanted to confirm that you all were sane. So yeah, the long ears is the big thing for me. You know, yeah. like the the only long eared cat is really the Maine Coon, and uh, I guess uh, Umbreon could somewhat look like a Maine Coon, but um, no, not uh, not enough for me. <laughs> no, I. I I'm happy to see Umbreon have a great finish, though. It's it's one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. Uh, a Pokemon that I shiny hunted. 1,400 eggs of Eevee for. Oh, um, dude, I, I feel ya. That was me and my Sylveon. <laughs> mm. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the, the the light blue shinies go go crazy uh, yeah. for the evolutions. But um, the the Umbreon fill in a very unique role on this team as not only a little bit of a Caloric Shadow answer, but also just a really great answer to Pokemon like Amoongus um, with taunt uh you can taunt into like incineroar inner focus is really great yawn is fantastic support and then foul play is another it's another dark type that can uh click stab foul play into the likes of calyrex ice and pick up some really big damage onto it yeah i think it's in all like umbreon's role as always is in these formats is to come on the field be annoying. And make your opponent bulky. sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. S- slow down the pace of the game while and while you're doing that, you have Pokemon such as Zacian, like the pressure that the Taunt or the Yawn can put on, or even just Snarl spamming to lower and punish all of these specs, uh, special attackers that are in the format, um, allows the Zacian to get that extra sword stance up to either go back to plus two or be plus three let's like Chien Pao or Urshifu in the rain like really uh get after it with like putting out offensive damage pressure while your opponent is not even trying like they're just on the back foot because you your Umbreon keeps on putting them behind um I think one of the other interesting texts on this team is that this is a ground a terra ground Rillaboom with a uh, high horsepower instead of the U-turn that we're used to seeing with Rillaboom and this is in this is a direct counter of for all of the Maridon teams that have been popping up. It's very much a not only am I going to take away your terrain and threaten your spec spawn with a fake out, but I'm also going to go click the my Terra and get a Terra ground stab high horsepower into you and just take out your restricted Pokemon. So I think that in itself is just more innovation that teams are players are trying to figure out to counter these super super powerful restricted uh, with their non-restricted mons even just using a very standard pokemon a very popular pokemon in a non-standard way i also do believe that this terra ground high horsepower is because this team actually really struggles to hit fire types just generally mm-hmm. speaking Outside um, of Urshifu, yeah, you, yeah, you have exactly Urshifu. Urshifu, and then, like, if you want to go even further and say, like, Incineroar, like, you have, like, Chi and Pao Sacred Swords and, like, play rough on Zacian. But we did see um, in their matchup against Ryan Haig uh, and their Terrifier Calyrex Ice, this team really, really struggled to mm-hmm. do uh, any type of consistent damage into it. Uh, they got their Zacian up to plus four, and we're clicking Behemoth Blade into it, and was doing like twenty five percent. That um, tracks. Yeah, because so. Cal- especially because Calyrex Ice is such like the this the natural bulk it has is just absolutely nutty on the physical end. Yeah. So we are going to skip fourth place. Uh, Adi, a uh, uh, Supermanian. Adi also ran ran the five of the same six as Montana Ma. Uh, the only difference was. Uh, Adi had a raging bolt over the Tornadus, and we want to. I really want to talk about this team here. I I also believe uh, Adi put out a uh, video. He did going over over the team as well. So he he did, um, and he also had Montana on the on his stream as well. Oh, cool! So if you do want more insight on those teams, like. Please, uh, once you're, w- don't do it now. Wait till you're done watching us. Then you can do it. That That's when you get permission yeah. to do it. The um, thing to note about Adi's team is Clefairy is on the rise and Caloric Shadow with Covert Cloak is also very interesting. Yes. Um, the Covert Cloak on Justin Burns' team is on the Amoongus, which I also think is interesting because that is not an item we usually see on Amoongus. But mm-hmm. that's not the most interesting thing on the team. Uh, this is another Ditto team. And... Uh, I went to a local on Thursday. It was uh, the last New England local of the season, and I ran Ditto on my team. And yeah, that's a guys. This this Pokemon's fun. It can do some dumb things. Like it's actually great. It's just very hard to position it properly. But if you do get it in the right position, uh, it it really has the opportunity to to steal games for you. If you get that Caloric Shadow with a nasty plot boost, if you get that yeah, I, Caloric I, Ice with a uh, you know uh, with, 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 with a, a chilling nay boost, chilling nay. 
Yeah, so in my round three matchup, I it so it it because it was a Thursday night, it had to be a best of one. It was a best of one Swiss local, and in my round three matchup, I brought the dildo in the back versus Cali S, and I was like, do I just let my Maridon die here and get in a Grimday boosted Calyrex via my ditto with a scarf? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm doing that. So I did, and uh, it did. The, I I got to do the thing with it, and my god, it was so fun. Uh, Ever click scarf, uh, help scarf, Terra boosted helping hand, um, uh, astral barrage off your ditto into your opponent's Calyrex just to see how quickly you can make the health bar drop. The endorphins, man, just sky. How high. does how does ditto's Terra work? It doesn't it's, copy their Terra type. Does it's, it? No, it's, it has its, it's own. your Terra. Okay, that's what I yeah. thought, but. Yeah, so you a lot of the times you do want to be Terra Ghost on the Ditto, um, and also in terms of investing stats, you I, you need to be max speed on the Ditto. The reason why is um, in the event, and Doctor Aaron Trailer brought this up in his team report when he used uh, Ditto's top eight. Um, when you bring Ditto into a Pokemon that it can't copy via Imposter, a great example of this is an Ogre Pond or a Terrapagos that has terrestrialized the imposter will fail you want didn't know that yes you want a super super fast transform so you can either self self transform into your partner pokemon or transform into the other pokemon and honestly i think when discussing ditto in the past one of the things that i didn't really think of is the utility that you can grab um try just not only just transforming again into the calyrex that's been boosted and you get to do yay funny button things um but going and transforming into use pretty much using your opponent's defensive types uh against them so for burns this team as a whole this is it has the standard base of the amoongus Insin um duo to support your calyrex ice help it get the trick room up and instead of going with the Raging Bolt, the Goldango, or the Pelipper that we're so used to. We went with some older Trick Roomy classics of regulations D through F, seeing uh, Urshifu um, si single strike on a, on a Trick Room team, seeing Iron Hands as your second fake out Mon, uh, with Volt Switch as well to act as a pivot as, um, to help things out. So this is like very akin to some of those other like more classic trick room teams of like I'd say Reg E and Reg F, and the Ditto is can literally be whatever defensive piece you need it to be. Um, in my top eight matchup against Stefan Ma, um, I was actually using the Ditto to transform into his Entei because he would try to he was leading Entei Jam Pao against my team, and I'd have the Ditto there where I can transform into the Entei and now. I have this ditto that because of his Entei is a great defensive piece against his Pokemon using his Pokemon. And that was like a different way of viewing the Pokemon that I hadn't really like thought of beforehand. So it was just like a nice way to look at something that I kind of wrote off as a gimmicky Pokemon. I now see like the, the benefit of using it and how these high end players are using it. Not that I'm saying I'm as good as, Dr. Aaron Trailer, or Justin Burns, or even Joe UX9, who also brought Ditto to this tournament. Um, got as good as them, but I, I do think if if you have a five Pokemon team and you don't want and like nothing else is really clicking, throw Ditto there. See what happens. So, uh, any other comments or on Ditto or this team? I know we spent most of it on Ditto because Ditto's the fun part. Nah, I, I got a whole lot of nothing. Okay, moving on to next team. Uh, Colin Heyer and Rajon Ball, they both ran the same exact team, the same exact six. And this is a newer look at the uh, the Karadon Sun teams that we're so used to seeing. Uh, they have the Raging Bolt and the Flutter Main, which are kind of the staples. Uh, but Whimsicott as the Tailwind Setter. And then a Scarf, Terra Ground, Terra Blast, Chiyu, and Gothitelle as the last two Mons. Um... I think this is a pretty cool team. I, the times that we saw Gothitelle on stream, it seemed like it was doing a lot in this format to like really just slow down the pace of play and just get um, get people out of position or unable to position themselves. 
Yeah, I think specifically on a team like this, Galvatel's really cool. You have a lot of these great offensive pieces on it. So you have the ability to trap your Galvatel, trap the other Pokemon into a bad matchup, whether it be against your Coridon, your Fluttermane, your Raging Bolt, your Chiyu, and really try to take advantage of that. With Fake Out Support and Covert Cloak, it gives you a lot of really great options that way as well. Um, I think it's interesting that Rajan flipped from Maridon to Coridon and it, and still kept another Electric Dragon on the team uh, you know, with the Whimsicott. It, it, it's like it's like Electric Dragons plus Whims are really great. Yeah, and like what you bring up with this event, um, looking at the team composition, just the overall like two Mon team comps um, for the tournament, uh, the fifth most popular two Mon team comp, team comp was Maridon plus Whimsicott just on at 11.76 percent so he, he wanted to still stay with the popular crowd with that he just you know his his dragon looks different yeah he's got a longer neck <laughs> <laughs> he's got like uh this this little like cloud thing um the flintstones theme song plays when he sends <laughs> it out can we say that i think we can say that yeah we it's, can it's, say public do- dom- it's public domain i don't know why but uh the other day i had the uh the Flintstones movies from the '90s stuck in my head. The live action ones. Yes, not oh my not, God. The, not the sequels, you, the original. Why did you do that to yourself? I don't know. It was just stuck in my head, and I I couldn't tell you the last time I watched it. I literally forgot those existed until you said it, and it, you're welcome. <laughs> right now, yes, <yeah>, sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely hate you. I, it is fitting with the team with three uh, past paradox spawns on it. That it, this is the the Flintstones team, and um, Chi is basically just like the birth of the sun, right? Like, it's... yeah, no, no, I mean, no, it does. It, yeah, th- that overheat definitely is might as well be the birth of the sun. Yeah, and I mean, you have like the Terra Terra Ground Terra Blast on it that you know just eliminates electricity. It's like yeah, sending you back to the Stone Age, baby. Yeah. Uh, see you later. Um, really cool team. Uh, from Rajan and Colin uh, that they brought to both get top eight. So really awesome yeah. for them. So, you know John Goodman hated that movie? I wonder why. <laughs> like, I, I guess he uh, he went to the director and was like, do not make a sequel. I will not be in it. Do not cast me. Yeah, instead Do not he... call me about doing another one. <laughs> instead, he went on to be the HVAC professor in Community, which is a goaded role. So I actually is, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is fantastic. He is also uh, my stepdad's guest every single time someone steps on the stage for Mass Singer. So uh, shout out John Goodman. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, he just really wants it to happen. <laughs> Dude, it, I love John Goodman. It, it is. It is his dream for John Goodman. <laughs> John Goodman, if you're listening, <laughs> give us a shot. Like, 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 what get, is that we're, going, we're, going to, we're going the mass singer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, do, do both and shout us out on the mass singer. That's a national attention right there for all the uh, the forty and fifty something year olds that really like seeing people dress up in mascot costumes and sing. <laughs> My mother in law loves that show, and like Amanda would watch it when she still lived with her parents, and like. What like like if that happened and John Good was there and it's like oh yeah shout out like Jay Angelo and Carter of Little <laughs> Lessons and for me to get the call of why did John Goodman give you a shout out like I'm just picturing <laughs> it in my head I'm, I I can literally hear her say that I'm just picturing it in my head it's it's amazing um, John Miller's team rounding out the top eight it's just another standard Calyrex Ice team um, before we go on to Bologna. Um, we're going to call this Carter's Corner. Carter, uh, what sweet hell from Los Angeles did you find? Sorry, I was over here looking at John Goodman's on IMDb. <laughs> okay, all right, hold on. I sent one to Carter. Oh, did uh, you? It, it was oh, well, the, I thought we were yeah. talking about John Goodman. <laughs> no, yeah, I sent a bunch of John Goodman pictures to Carter. Actually, I, I was I was uh, doing like a John Goodman fan cam. Um, so. <laughs> I I this episode is wild, man. I'm, I'm glad you said that before I took my sip of coffee, or it would have just went right up my nose, <laughs> and we would have a lot of unusable audio. 
I uh, I picked out a uh, VJ Sood's team at uh, I believe six three or five four, one or the other. Uh, uh, what do you know? What place? I I, I do not. Oh, found yeah. it. Yeah, look at this what team. What team is man. this? The Miascarada Tinkaton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylveon yeah, yeah. Tropicos Galarian Zapdos team. I I just I I don't think I've seen a more unique six set of Pokemon in my entire life. <laughs> that is a team. I love Tinkaton. I love Sylveon. Uh, yeah, Scrat is like the second best starter of this generation. It's the, it's the most successful one. It is pretty good. Yeah, I played it. I yeah. played it twice at Hartford. <laughs> same t- same po- same player, same team. Just, same play- just played it twice. <laughs> You, if did, I had a nickel you... every time. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at that point in the format, because, like, I mean, Regulation A, this was, like, Miascarada was, like, I'm not in Cinnor levels of usage, but it was, like, 40-50% usage. Yeah, which pretty good. Close stuff. And then Regulation B happened, and we got Fluttermane, and uh, apparently being a dark type was bad. So for Miyoshi- some reason. Yeah, I don't know Being why. a dark type in a format dominated by a ghost, uh, by a fairy type, bad. Yeah, no, no, no don't, don't, can't con- that can't put two and two together there. Uh, but yeah, like see, seeing Meowskarada literally a year and a half after its heyday, uh, get points at six three is pretty interesting. The uh, the the flamethrower as the tech move on the Terrapagos, um is also quite interesting as well. Um, that's not really something we've seen a lot of, but we've seen we're. Once we go through it, we're going to see a lot of different uh, interesting tech moves on the Terrapagos, whether it's com- the Combine set or the Spec set. Um, what else do we have here for you? Um, okay, so I was looking at Day 2 teams. I'm actually going to stay at like reasonable teams for a second. Yeah. There's a ton of Annihilates. Like, an unhealthy amount of Annihilate in Day 2. So, did you know that, like, Choice Scarf Final Gambit is really good? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I did know that. Um, there's one here in 17th that is, like, Mouse Ape with Sableye Comfey uh, Maridon. Like, that's really cool. Um, but the one I want to talk about is 36th place Christian Solano. Oh, this team is nasty. This team is really cool, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we right have here. the we have the both. So between the Gastrodon, the Grim screens, and the Rhyperior, this team screams, "I am not losing to Maridon." <laughs> With that being said, like most of the Maridon, or at least I think like the really good Maridon teams were putting in built-in counters to these heavy ground types. Um, this isn't the first time I've even seen Rhyperior. Um, I know yes- yesterday in the New England Discord server, we re- we held our own little, like, uh, community tournament, and uh, Cap was using um, a Rhyperior on his team, but it wasn't with, a, with an Annihilate and a Gastrodon. Um, uh, so there was actually three Rhyperiors at this tournament, uh, the other two combined went zero and nine. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, that that doesn't shock me. That does not yeah. shock me. If you look at Rhyperior's stats, there, it's it, this this Pokemon was literally made because, or at least good for a moment, because low power format plus Dynamax plus weakness policy, and the second plus L plus ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Um, I think one of the interesting <laughs> things. I'm I'm just skipping that. Uh, one of the more interesting things is it's a coaching Zamazenta, um, no iron with no iron defense, and doesn't need it too good by itself. It, I I still think it needs. I, I you would like to protect somewhere. Oh um, yeah, I fully agree. Yeah. But I like, think that coaching is like really cool here though because you have three physical attack. I mean four if you want to count Grimmsnarl. And when Zamazenta's matchup is, like, not necessarily great, you can just say, okay, here Look, you go, here Annihilate. Here's a coaching here you go, yeah. Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame. Here you go, Rhyperior. Like, well, hello there, Incineroar. Would you like to be Drain Punched? 
Yeah. Um, hey, you know, it's your free bulk up, basically. So yeah. the other Pokemon I really like want to point out here is uh, the Ogre Pond Heart Flame. Uh, for those of you who, are, who forgot, this Pokemon's a walking nuke. Um, not a lot yeah, of this things... thing also really appreciates a uh, coaching. Oh, boost. oh my god! If this thing gets a coaching <laughs> boost, um, so I had it on my team for the local and a plus one. So the a plus one Terra Fire Ivy Cudgel. O code a Terra Grass Kyogre in the rain. Um, o code a Chiyu just straight up, like no sun or anything. Like the 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 kills I was getting with this thing. Um, throw the damage calculator out. It doesn't matter. It it, it does. It actually does that much damage. Where if you don't resist it, you're probably going to get knocked out. And also, if you do resist it, there's a good chance you're getting knocked out. Yeah, uh, for all my UDL viewers, you're going to be seeing a lot more Ogre Pond Hearth Flame in the future. Hell yeah. Um, sure. So shout out shout out to that. Um, this week, uh, it did about 70% to a Corviknight behind, behind Reflect. So um, <laughs> that that was very clearly like max bulk. Um, yeah. So <laughs> shout, shout out to you, Ogre Pond. <laughs> no, it, it, it's like... I usually play balance. I do prefer that play style, but for one night it was so fun playing Adamant Ogre Pond Heart Flame and, uh, and just bopping people and, and Specs Maridon and <laughs> saying LOL calc this. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just Angelo, <laughs> come to the dark side of hyper offense. You just do that all the time. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I Dude, keep... it's so good. You need to. It's, it just but it's so much me. fun when you're like, oh yeah, I'm playing so slow right now, and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, how about I just drop my hammer on your head right now? <laughs> yeah. What well, if, that's... and hear me out on this, bop. <laughs> yeah. Bonk, bonk, boop. <laughs> so I know we there's probably a ton of sillier teams, but we do have an entire other tournament to talk about. Yeah. Let's, all right, all right, fine. One, I was going to say. One let's, more. One let's more. move to the motherland. No, uh, one more, one more, one more. One more, fine. We had to we had to talk about the uh where'd it go? The skunk tank frost moth team. Okay, yeah, this team's a little crazy. <laughs> uh, ben this... Immersion. I, I believe if I'm not incorrect here, Ben has had a couple of really good performances. He, the that, name that's looks a name very that I familiar. Yeah, that's a name I definitely recognize. Can I look up a player on Lab Mouse? Is that a thing? I do? don't think you can. I will. No, I don't think you can. No, it doesn't look like it. But Lame. yeah, that, that name is hey, very Tim, familiar. If you're me. listening, I have a feature I want to edit. <laughs> I'll text him after. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Th this team has got. It's like, nice having connections. <laughs> th this team's got like a lot going on here. Dude, um, this team is wild from start to finish. I'm like, I, I, my eyes are going cross. <laughs> you, you guys handle this one. He's, he's, yeah, he's seeing the visions here. <laughs> so, you, oh, I'm, you, I'm seeing visions of something. <laughs> you've got like pretty standard Como with like throw chop. That's whatever. Rillaboom is also pretty standard. Um, Thunderous has been actually something that's been popping up quite a bit in the meta yeah. of late. We'll be um, talking about it at, uh, once we get to the next tournament, definitely. Prankster Eerie Impulse, surprisingly, is very, very really good. good. Yeah. Um, I say surprisingly as, like, uh, sarcastic. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. Like, yeah, imagine dropping minus two special attack on whatever you feel like that's not named like to you. Um, the Frost Moth here... Pretty interesting. Uh, you got Grassy Seed, Wide Guard, Helping Hand, Ice Beam, and Bug Bus. Today I learned this thing gets Wide Guard <laughs> and Helping Hand. Yes, Where I learned are the that. Hands? Uh, I learned that what UDL week one this this season. Uh, <laughs> Where are the hands? That, that's what I get for playing Psy Spam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like it's just a bug. It can't Where do anything, are the hands? right? <laughs> It's its wings. It flaps them and it goes, yeah, yeah, do your but, thing. But um, yeah, every single week in UDL, I have to go onto my uh my prep doc and I have to type wide guard and prison trick room and see what <laughs> see what all the other team has. It. <laughs> and I got I gotta know like we gotta be on a on a wavelength here. Um, Skuntank, 
Sten- I don't know, man. <laughs> this is oh. what it's here for, and I will tell you right now, okay? Stench, Stench Sucker Punch. Faint and Sucker Punch. Yep. It's just flinching you. Okay. Yeah. I played I played Flinch uh I played King's Rock, uh Snarl uh something the the past couple weeks. Um and 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 it flinched a bunch of times. And do you know how frustrating that is? Um, ask Don Mateo of UDL uh, to know to know because he uses it against me every single time we play because he beat me on it one time, stopping my zoom roll from clicking belly drum. Um, so it would it, it's awesome, right? Like, what is this ability? What? So, it just makes flinches happen. Yeah. Well, so yeah. So, it's just a free King's Rock. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so that that that's so the 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 glooms uh the gloom dugong team that was going around like that was the whole thing where you had a you had bu- bullet seed loaded dice stench um gloom stench gloom isn't real it can't hurt you it's, it is so real it legitimately okay is, it's more ask real anyone than the in the sixteen to seventeen hundreds on showdown best of one ladder they they will tell you their horror yeah. stories <laughs> and, and like, like Paul Chua, yeah, go, go ask Paul Chua. Paul, Paul Chua lost. Um, I think honestly though, the most interesting. I am going back. Like, I, the, to me, the most interesting Pokemon isn't it the Stun Tank. It definitely is the Frost Moth. Um, that the so the Ice Scales ability. I'm just going to. I don't know what Ice Scales. Boost, it boosts either. special defense. Yes, it does. It boosts. So it halves damage from any special move that hits this Pokemon. Including special moves that target the defense stats, such as Psy Shock. So, uh, this actually allows oh, it to survive okay. like heat yeah. waves and and things like that, which is very very com- interesting. And when you combine it with the plus one defense of the Grassy Seed, this thing, even though it is quite literally the worst defensive type in the entire game, like it, it is the worst defensive type you can possibly have for any type combination in, in the entire game defensively in being a bug ice type this thing gets pretty bulky especially when you can change that uh very very crap uh ice bug typing into something like dragon uh and all of a sudden anything that's in like the water fire grass like balance sort of like defense like defensively can't touch it the uh the maridon even um ha- you have to click draco meteor into it because your electric type attacks with between the dragon type Terra and the ice scales aren't doing enough damage. So yeah. it, it weirdly gets bulky enough and is one of these Pokemon that in this specific format for this specific event uh, was that could actually like like Frostmoth Rillaboom could actually like really, really help your Maridon matchup. Yeah, and it has really good special attack at 125. Like yeah. that grassy seed is going to improve your base sixty defense. The the ice scales makes it so that your base ninety defense is basically like base one eighty, in a yeah. way. Um, so it, it's it's very interesting. Do I think it's that good? No. no. And I think that Ben will probably attest to that if if we ask them. So uh, Ben, let us know if uh, this was any good for you in your run. But. Uh, yeah, uh, very unique nonetheless. And uh, shout out to Flinch, Flinch Strats. Uh, oh, always very cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, off to the motherland. Uh, Bologna, uh, the Bologna special event just finished up today. And while we do have a super high like number of players, just one thing to note with the special events, uh, is this one specifically, is that a lot of the special events, uh, the registration fee is free. So it literally does not cost any amount of money to sign up for it. So a lot of times with these special events, it happened with a few others early in the year as well, uh, where the number of people who, like, people even submit their team lists, but there's no penalty for not showing up because you're not paying any money to go anyways. So there is, I think, like, for this event, there was close to, like, a 30% no-show rate. So, because it literally didn't matter. Like, it's not like, it's not like if, if one of us, we went to a regional in the in the States where they're charging 70 bucks for your registration fee that's practically non-refundable. Um, which is, you know, they're able to work through it. Yeah, so you can decide if you didn't want to go to Bologna or not. <laughs> <laughs> and we so and then at this event we had some really interesting teams as well uh a, some teams that definitely 
time out of order. Guess what, awesome. guys? Jay was right again. Yeah, Jay was right <laughs> again. Um, oops, I clicked the wrong button. I mean, I think we should all just realize at this point, Jay is always right. Mm-hmm. Anyone who doubts him is just a hater. Yeah, and you're yeah, wrong. No, he, you're, you're, he's right most. You are right most of the time. Uh, I think you might be the most right person on this podcast. That's partially because I don't shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> Your words are thoughts. Yeah, I remember you at the beginning of Regulation F calling Entei a B tier. If I'm not, if I'm not incorrect, I think um, you know, l- long long term view, I was right. No, that, you were not, my friend. You were nowhere it, near right. It won. It won multiple regionals, and it, it won, won at least one. one. Okay. It won one. And, and is that worthy of B tier? And then did nothing the rest of the event. It was like the. <laughs> It was like no. the dead. It was like the deadbeat dad that showed up on your 16th birthday with a car and then disappeared for the rest of your life. Mm. You got a car out of it though, so yeah. You know. And honestly, if I got a car from my deadbeat dad, that would be pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, he's <laughs> unable to do that though for reasons. <laughs> um, let's talk about Ruby. Are you okay over there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, you. you uh... Oh yeah, no, it's it's okay. I it, you need a hug. <laughs> Uh, like, uh, what is it, like, 12 years ago now? I would probably, I would probably need a hug. I, I've kind of come to terms with it at this point. <laughs> he didn't leave, he just, uh, stopped breathing, so. <laughs> 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 that, that is the thing that happened. <laughs> um, speaking of stopping breathing, uh, Ghost Type Calyrex won again. <laughs> Um, go, Ghost. I, really, really I can't enough. right now. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm going to right now. All right, I'm they gonna... just derailed Guys. this train and then went. No, we got this. <laughs> oh, this is the gaslight episode. I I, uh, oh. I I've been reading too much Lord of the Ra- Lord of the Rings lately, and so all all I'm doing is just like Lord dumping my daily life at this point. Um, no, we we, we... it's it's cool. Let, let's get back on track. Uh, so the calor the calorex here is holding the citrus berry item, and. Uh, we talked about how Montana ran a super bulky Calyrex in Los Angeles. And one of the things to note, so in Los Angeles, only three Calyrex in the event held a, uh, held a citrus berry where in Bologna 27 did, it was the number one item used by Calyrex shadow. So in the span of a week, not only did people say like, okay, Clef plus Cali S with uh, Terra Fairy draining kiss nasty plot is good. But I don't want the sash Cali. I want this thing to be like seven C's thick defensively. And adding the citrus berry is an amazing way to do that. Uh, what's super cool is with the unnerve ability is the Calyrex gets the berry and your opponents don't, which is why, which is why, one of the reasons why we haven't seen berries on the other Pokemon because of the Calyrex. But this is actually a Pokemon. The Pokemon that stops berries from being used can actually use them, which I well, think the is other, super. The other neat. thing about that is there's just so many good items nowadays that like I mean, that's citrus it. berry isn't like a requirement on your team anymore, right? No. Like, I mean, you have assault vest, you have cover cloak. Uh, I mean, what what are Clamulet. what are the most popular items this weekend? Yeah, assault vest, focus sash, safety goggles, cover cloak, choice scarf. Like, look, uh, citrus berry I think is in the top. 12 in items yeah and i and i i can almost guarantee you that most of the citrus pokemon with citrus berries are caloric shadows yeah cali shadow had 30 percent day two usage in this in this tournament uh so. the most the most uh the pokemon with the most held items that were citrus berries was incineroar at yeah five percent uh yeah oh, well, citrus caloric shadow is number four behind okay. mungus which is another usual citrus suspect yep. and then Frigoraph. Which so. also makes sense. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Mian Xiao got a got a tournament win year, which is cool. Uh, yeah, I've no, a... this is a uh, no protect. Have the you're you're just going all tech moves, fake out wide guard, faint, and then close combat to punish the other dark types. Faint is so cool on a fake out mon. I I can't stress that enough. We're just like, oh, you're gonna protect in front of me. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I, so I'm, I, I, at the be at like earlier format, I was using like this core of Caloric Shadow plus Nian Shao, except I was using Choice Specs Cali Shadow, and so like clicking Faint to not only break Protects, but you also can break through Wide Guard that way. 
Yes. Um, it allows you to really enable your Calyrex Shadow to do anything it wants. And this also works really well next to Pokemon like your Chiyu and like your Rillaboom. You can then go and click Grassy Glides and Wood Hammers and pressure that fake out. Um, obviously, you have your built-in Incineroar counter right there, your built-in Normal-type counter right there. Um, I think that this team is just very uniquely positioned into the format to where you have so many fantastic um, options into Pokemon that you struggle with. Um, and yeah, and like this Draining Kiss, Citrus Berry, Caloric Shadow is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that's cool is you have the Sing Clefairy as well, because people hate using a uh, Hydro Pump, but love using their uh, li a literal coin flip. Um, but It's like, it, better than a coin flip. It's slightly. Slightly. Hey, hey, slightly is still better. It is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like having that as an option where you can just click the sing and you know, if it doesn't, it gives the Clefairy something to do if it doesn't have to click helping hand or it isn't doing anything like follow me where, you know, you have about a coin flip to just completely ruin your opponent's plan. Uh, the other Sli thing, slightly better than a coin flip is better than anything at all. Dash, the guy who missed all of his hypnosis, which are seventy percent accurate. <laughs> uh, they're sixty, sixty-five. I think they're sixty. Uh, let's look this up. I, we, I we, we, we while you do that, up. we can also talk about the covert cloak on Chi Yu. Yeah, I it's sixty percent. Thank you. That's okay. You see, I'm right sometimes. Slightly better than a coin flip. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the, covert, <laughs> the covert cloak Chiyu is also pretty neat. Um, stopping opposing snarls from going into the Chiyu, stopping the fake out, uh, being able to have a better defensive terra type in water instead of the usual terra ghost that we see on the Chiyu, uh, while still just causing a lot of havoc. Uh, being able to just click out super powerful snarls, heat waves, overheats, and then. Uh, taunt as a way to stop trick rooms stop incense stop amoongus uh you know outside of just clicking overheat into the amoongus and nuking it into high hell um yeah no super cool pokemon a super interesting way of using a common pokemon that we're used to seeing uh, i think i'm going to skip to fourth place just so we can cover uh all of the calyrex teams in top eight um, you don't want this... to talk about uh springtail there's no, two we're going of them to get in to top it. eight, but we'll get the we'll get there. Yeah, we're going to get to it. Yeah, first, I just want to cover the the Calyrex Shadow. Um, this team finished in fourth place, and the main thing to bring up here, as Jay alluded to earlier, is the Covert Cloak Thunderous. Yeah, this one instead of having Thunder Wave has Rain Dance instead, uh, which, which enables yeah, also, like your Urshifu mo mode mm -hmm. and also protects your Rillaboom from strong fire type attacks. Um, I feel like Thunder Wave on this team is probably like maybe a little bit better because it gives you like a really great speed control option since you don't have that um, like you do on uh, Ruben's team with the Tornadus. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Hippolyte still got uh, fourth place and only lost in the Caloric Shadow Mirror, which is like nightmare fuel, just yeah. generally speaking. Um, so, you know, you, you win some, you lose some there. They like uh, Ruben made some incredible calls in that in that set to uh, that to make. was a very good match. Yeah, yeah. I like... got to watch uh, top eight today, so it was very entertaining. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that. This team overall, it has the sa same idea as Ruben's team. It just uses that Thunderous, which is really great control into opposing um, Caloric Shadow teams. You survive was, the yeah. plus two Astral Barrage. Uh, you allow yourself to get a Taunt off into Clefairy, and then you also allow yourself to then click your Impulse into the Kalida. Yeah, the uh, the Eerie the Prankster Eerie Impulse was an amazing call into this meta game where there were. Uh, there was a Calyrex Ice, I mean, I'm sorry, a Calyrex Shadow in top cut, there was a Kyogre in top cut, and there were also three um, Tropagos, and I believe it was the top eight match. Um, he was playing a Kamai Tropagos team, and the pretty much like the just the presence of the Eerie Impulse 
was just slowing down the Terrapagos because you're like, I have to boost because if I don't boost, I'm going to be minus two. So I want to try to hedge the Eerie Impulse. And it didn't even need to click Eerie Impulse to get that mind game going. And of course, when it did, you were just completely like, dis, uh, you were completely stopping the, uh, the Terrapagos from really doing anything. So yeah. I think that was just an amazing call for this specific event and this specific metagame. And if we do see more of this Calyrex uh, pop up at NAIC, maybe you might see more uh, more Thunderous. I do want to say, okay, this is this is Jay's prediction for NAIC right here, okay? Hot take after saying I'm always right. I don't think Calyrex Shadow is going to have a great NAIC. No, I don't think not. so either. No, no I, I think it's um... going to go back to that this thing is incredible everyone's gonna bring uh really strong teams against it yeah no i think this the format in general seems very very cyclical in terms of like what's doing well into what i like if i had to guess what did well i think it would be a team similar to uh lucas team uh lucas Sarah valley who came in second place i think i had to put my money where my mouth is i think it's going to be another uh, maridon team um, Luca is using a more modern take on the team, um, really leaning into the Tailwind mode instead of being a Tail Room team, swapping out the Incineroar for a Scarf Chiyu, uh, throwing as, a, as your fire type, and then instead of having um, your ground type, whether it was the Landorus or the Blood Moon or Saluna, I uh, went with an Iron Hands and a Dark Fu. Uh, the Dark Fu also being a, a, one of the calls along with Chiyu as an example of Pokemon here to try to make Calyrex cry. Yeah. I, I, I love Terra Ground Chiyu on this team. <clears throat> one of my favorite things to do in Pokemon is uh, spam really strong spread moves. Yep. Um, I.e. Like heroin. It's great. I.e. Earthquake, I.e. Expanding Force, I.e. Heat Wave plus Discharge. Like, yeah. Especially when you're Beads of Ruining everything in front of you as well, and it's like, all right, eat this. <laughs> like, was, was Luca the one who missed the... It was in finals, right, where he missed both Heat Waves? I, no, ooh. you're thinking of... Um, there was a, uh, that was a... Joji, I think, like two weeks ago. No, it, there was one. There was one today. Yeah, I saw. I saw. I didn't actually get I to think watch. It was, finals. I think it was I Luca it. in the finals. Yeah, it was, yeah. But, but, uh, like as soon as it happened, he just like he lost both of his Pokemon because it was in front of uh, like a plus three Cali plus uh, Mianxiao missed the heat wave and then just like yeah lost both of his Pokemon and went yeah we we can't come back from this. Yeah. I yeah. saw a meme right after the. Um, the tournament ended it was like the one where it's like the office worker and it's like oh this is like oh you're so cute or oh i'm gonna call hr and it's like chi 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 you i'm gonna miss all my moves oh that's so cute iron bundle i'm gonna miss all my moves someone call hr <laughs> like <laughs> um i've said this multiple times but can you say this if you love your fish your fish like like my chi you never missed a heat wave Oh, it sweet, missed over heat, sweet but it never a heat wave <laughs> because I love my fish. I love you know my like, jinx yourself. I right? love my oh, no, fish. that's why that's why I'm not using Chiyu for the rest of the format. I know my limitations. I'm playing with fates quite larger than myself. <laughs> There's a reason why I use Fire Pod as my fire type on the on the Maridon team. Uh, I love my like fish. Hyper offensive and want to punch things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love my fish so much, and then it decided to miss uh, a. Heatwave in semifinals of UDL. That uh, thankfully the the goat of this channel, Ogre Pond Cornerstone, managed to pull out uh, because Ogre Pond Cornerstone is the goat, and it's truth. I, that is, I'm just speaking facts here, people. Okay, that, you know, that that's a rock fact. Rock fact, baby. D Dwayne would be happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, fishing. Can I go like... back to retirement? Like, nope. is that an option? Nope. <laughs> You've never been retired, okay? I don't know why you're saying go back. <laughs> yeah, you, you just you, you just had to like do things for like two weeks because we we also this is also the first Sunday we've recorded on in like three weeks as well. So you know, sorry you ha we had to record when you worked, but Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We're all here. Yeah. It's great. Let's go to uh, Screamtail next.
it. Yes. Uh, so Antonio Sanchez, uh, this is one of three uh, Combine Terrapagos teams. This one using a firewater grass core to support itself um, with Magnet, Terra, Electric, Raging Bolt, and the Screamtail. Yeah, this is also the same team as 7th place Victor Medina. Um, yes, it is. Actually, yes, it is. So I want to bring that up. I was going to pull up 7th uh, and 5th as well. So yeah, this was one of three Combine teams. Uh, Antonio and Victor both used the leftovers on the Terrapagos, which uh, uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the leftovers on the Terrapagos on, uh, if you're going to be running the Combine variant. I understand the thought process, uh, especially like you could use, especially with the uh, grassy surge, you can go like get the lefties grassy surge, protect, then another round of lefties grassy surge and recover 25% to pretty much always keep the Terra shift on um, in play. But you always saw games where you were forced to protect in front of the trick room. I'm, I'm sorry. Protect in front of the fake out when if you were running the covert cloak, you could have just continued to click call mine. Um, you were always afraid of the snarl spam and just any of, of these other like off like effects to, that could throw you off and the leftovers might not have been really giving you all that much. Sure, your terror shift was... What, your uh, terror shell was always in play. But once you terrestrialized the uh, and you lost the ability, the lefties really didn't do a, as much for you. While the cover cloak really brings a lot more to the table. Um, I like cloak. I, I like cloak I, a lot. I'm a little bit of a lefties believer myself. Like I I love cloak too. I think it's fantastic because there's a lot of snarl in the format. But like when you go and you you, you go to the stellar form. You get a massive HP stat. You yeah. get a boost up to one base one sixty HP. Like that leftovers is doing a significant chunk to your bulk. Like it is really going to be bringing back some some decent amount of HP for uh, on that front. So um, no, you aren't wrong. I I I like both a lot. I, I yeah. I, I I you definitely. I it's more so. I think it is a preference thing because we did see a lot of the Terrapagos with. We did see a lot of the Terrapagos with either or on these combine sets um whether it was the lefties or the cover cloak i also think it just goes with how you approach your play if, if you're fine with having to have some more passive turns where maybe you have to wait a way to turn to set up or something because you, you're forced to click the, the protect um and you're just fine with that because you want to have that consistent recovery then then if that fits your play style that's the way to go uh, I think one of the things where it also does help is with the Screamtail, um, super fast Encore plus Disable locking is really great. Um, I mean, Disable in general in a format where a lot of Pokemon are really getting, even like a speci specifically the Restricted Pokemon, are getting a lot of their mileage out of a single move, whether it's Astral Barrage, Glacial Lance, Terra Star Storm, uh, to be able to just click disable and say, no, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Like, if you're doing that into a Calyrex, it, okay, you're now forced to click either Draining Kiss or High Horsepower. Or if you do it into a Terrapago, like like the Combine Terrapagos, and you stop Terra Star Storm, you, you got to click Earth Power, Ice Beam, or something like that. And then all of the specs bonds, if you click disable, you just stop it from doing anything. And you just completely take a slot out of uh your opponent yeah i think encore is like just an inherently busted move it's why we put whimsicott so high on our tier list and when you have the ability to use that and then also disable cause them to struggle um i think that's great i also think that disable yeah. like on its own merit is really really important yeah. as well you can lock something you you can find you know, that Pokemon that really is going to threaten your Terrapagos or whatever you're really going to focus around that match, whether it be the Raging Bolt or the Urshifu, and then say, I'm just going to disable that move on this next turn. You're not going to be able to click that button again, and therefore now my Terrapagos is going to be much safer. Um, yeah. So, yeah. The other look at Terrapagos, uh, Alessio Fusca's team, um, 
this one, it was the Covert Cloak on the Comic Tropagos with Flamethrower over Earth Power as the uh, coverage move. And while both teams have the Rillaboom and the Incineroar, there's a lot of different bonds. Uh, two Pokemon that we actually really haven't seen much of at all in this format. Uh, of course, we have the Ogre Pond Wellspring, and even then, uh, this Ogre Pond has no Grass-type coverage. It is Spiky Shield, Follow Me, Taunt, and Ivy Cudgel, uh, working as your redirection mon. Comfey is something that we are used to seeing with the Terrapagos. It's like, so this, the bottom four here is a very common bottom four that you, like, common core that we saw early, early meta on how we thought Terrapagos was supposed to be built. Uh, Comfey has Floral Healing, which when boosted by Grassy Surge, can always get your Terra Shell back up to uh, full and online. And it also provides super fast draining kiss to punish these fighting types and dark types and the trick room as a speed control. The Dragapult, though, is something that I, I don't think I've seen it. We've seen it at all in day in any day two uh, so far in Regulation G. Yeah, not since, uh, what, Justin Tang? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, no. Um, well, yeah, that tracks. I, I was going to say Worlds. Um, there was a Dragon Ball came in second, but like, yeah, this isn't a Mon that we've really seen, and this isn't even a set that we've really seen. Yeah, I actually do enjoy this set quite a bit. Like, the Thunder Wave on it is really interesting because of its speed. Um, it gives you a lot of different options into a ton of different Pokemon. Uh, Sucker Punch, great way to potentially deal with that Caloric Shadow if it's going to force you to Terra. Um, darts is like a really strong move, just generally speaking, considering that it has like its its auto targeting. Um, and Phantom Force is a great way to say, yeah, maybe you have me down to Sash, but you're not gonna be able to touch me next turn. I can then break through your protect. I can break through, you know, what you, what whatever defensive play you're gonna try to put in front of me, and uh, do do a load of damage because Dragapult also has really good attacking stats. Yeah. So. Um, and you're able to invest in those, and, and you're able to invest not fully, but you can go 252 um, into that stat because you're running the sash. Yeah, I think I've been a the... big fan of Comfy in this format, um, especially on these Terrapagos teams. I think that it's really difficult to deal with, and like the healing and the priority that it gets, like it gets better priority than Fake Out, I believe. Yep. Um, so it's able to just click Floral Healing like safely every single turn. Um, Comfy's like, busted, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah with, with all of these really the bulky Pokemon, thing. it's awesome. Yeah. I think one of the interesting things, just not only just the way with, like, Alessio's call with the Dragapult, was that most people are going to say that Dragapult isn't good in the format because Caloric Shadow does outspeed it, but Aless at, at least on stream, we're able to see Alessio consistent his Dragapult consistently outspeed other Calyrexes because these Calyrexes are leaning more into their bulk stats and not yeah. going full blown into the speed stat. Now we might see that change where you might see Calyrexes invest enough speed to maybe just outspeed Dragapult and not go max speed, but fast enough to just tech this if people believe it's worth teching for. Um, even just type wise, uh, being a ghost type really, really helps Terrapagos. Because people are going to want to click Drain Punch. They're going to want to click Close Combat into the normal type. And having that Ghost type switch in that immediately goes and says, okay, I'm going to have this really strong Dragon Darts, or I'm going to Phantom Force you. Um, I'm going to Sucker Punch you. That like That's super great to have. Or even just, I'm going to Thunder Wave you, and now every single time uh, you click a move, you have to play the fun game of, am I actually going to move or not? The final team to go over is 8th Place's Al Alessandro. You, you missed the uh, Kyogre team as well. I, oh, I missed the Kyogre team. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we can we can talk pretty briefly about it because we did talk about this team when we covered Indianapolis. Um, it's basically the same team as uh, mm -hmm. Shai Lang Tang's uh, Top 8 squad. Yeah. couple differences like Terra Ice Serena, which is really cool to boost your triple axles. And it's um, also a citrus berry over a uh, the the zoom lens. Yeah, zoom lens. Yeah, the wide lens or whatever wide uh, lens to thing. hit your moves. Um, 
focus sash on the flutter main, which is with you know, interesting with trick room. Very, very cool because you're probably investing pretty heavily in bulk on Kyogre on this team. Uh, no, no tornadus means that, you know, you're, you do have that option to go trick room. Uh, you also have the jugulus still, which I think is really awesome on these Kyogre teams to hit your hurricanes and just do massive damage and also be a good answer to Kali shadow. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, this is a uh, pretty much what Kyogre has kind of de- uh, like evolved into a little bit. Uh, this assault fast Terra Grass set uh, gives it a ton of different options to play around priority and play around, um, you know, bad type matchups. Uh, when it can't just go out and click Water Spout over and over and over again, you now have the ability to click Origin Pulse, Thunder, Ice Beam, and be really bulky on that special end. Yeah, and especially boosting that special defense in a format where we have seen the Caloric Shadow on the rise is also super great for this format. Uh, and while this is probably the more the most standard or standardish version of Kyogre we're going to see, I'd say this is probably uh, this is probably the most standard version of Zamazenta. It's yeah. kind of joined uh, Caloric Shadow, not Caloric Shadow, Calyrex, well, Caloric Shadow and Calyrex Ice as the I'm going to use this Fire, Water, Grass, Balancey Trio in Peli, in Cinderella. Um I'm going to have Chien Pao, which uh, the Sword of Ruin doesn't depreciate the body press, but makes sure it does more damage, which is always super cool. And then Raging Bolt is one of the best Pokemon in the format. And uh, the a lot of these Rillabooms as well, these Rillabooms on the Zamazenta teams really like being Choice, uh, choice Band, Terra, Grass. To just get off some obnoxiously powerful grassy glides. Yeah. The Zamazenta is iron defense, uh, unlike the Michael Kelch team that won uh, Stockholm a couple weeks ago, um, which had wide guard on it instead. Uh, heavy slam seems to be the, the correct move on Zamazenta for its steel type coverage, uh, which makes sense. Uh, Behemoth Blade, Behemoth Bash, I guess, is a little bit more inconsistent into Pokemon like Fluttermane and things like that. Uh, Heavy Slam's a bit more inconsistent into Calyrex Ice, but at that point, you just want to be clicking Body Press anyway. Yeah. Um, and then the major difference we're seeing is the transition from Latios to Raging Bolt for that Dragon type, and then the uh, change from Galarian Moltres to Pelipper without Tailwind. Uh, plus wide guard on this uh, for that flying type. Yeah. No, in general, I think this is just a more standard, like, again, it's more standard good mons and to support the Zamazenta. And while it, it did get eighth place, it wasn't, it hasn't been as dynamic as it was uh, pre LA, but this still is a very, very powerful Pokemon. And there's a good chance the meta does move back to it, uh, whether it's for NAIC or worlds yeah it has a you know pretty solid caloric shadow matchup like overall especially on those wide guard sets like your damage is obviously not amazing into it but you're neutral to both of its moves um you have really great bulk on it uh i wouldn't be surprised to see zamazenta you know plus this chi and pao and Cineroar, maybe like you know that moltres galar comes back and that pelipper slot like you have a really really solid uh answer into that Caloric Shadow. Um, although I think Caloric's Ice might really be on the rise for NAIC. I, that, yeah. that, that's my Pokemon to, to keep an eye on yep. for this this upcoming weekend. I think that balance is going to be back in business. Definitely. And, and it being, again, just the most consistent Pokemon, even though it really didn't show... Uh, there were no Caloric's Ice. Uh, the, the highest ranking Caloric's Ice team... 34th or something, at- right? Yes, and there was a lot of Calyrex uh, Shadow, but in general, like this is the first event where Calyrex Ice, we can say, like had a quote unquote bad event. Um, it's just been consistently so good, and I don't expect that to really change going into NAIC. Uh, so now we move into part two of the Carter Corner. Um, I know that Jay sent some teams to you specifically for this event no that was from la oh, that was, was the one LA. that i sent what do you have earlier. what do you have for below yeah. uh first off i want to give a shout out to esther oh esther went to this esther event? played uh esther finished at six and three uh and if i read the tweet correctly i'm pretty sure she slept in and uh missed the first three rounds <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, sir. So, so wa- walked in und- and went undefeated. That is... I, I could be wrong, but I I do know that uh, she was there. So, uh, huge shout-outs to, to Esther down yeah, here. Yeah, 157. 157, yep. Here is Esther's team. Uh, again, j- th- we were just talking about this. The Calyrex balance good stuffs yeah. uh, with Pelipper. Um, so, shout-out Esther for using my burb. My favorite Esther burb. Esther the goat. Um, and then I have, I have a few, uh, something I really like to do when pulling up like data from these events is just sort by like overall win rate percentage. Uh, and the most winning percent, like the highest winning percentage Pokemon from this event was iron leaves at 71% of their matches won because someone went 10 and four with iron leaves. <laughs> 11 and four. Hold on. What? Mateo, uh, Citrone. Uh, this is, uh, wow. Um, wow, King Gambit as well. <laughs> this yeah, seems, this like, seems really cool. So, it, it definitely makes sense. Um, no, I just saw that that's Life Orb over Heat Maridon. That broke my brain. This is um, like the early format what everyone thought Maridon teams are gonna look like. Like, stick your Quark Drive users next to it, and then, like, ha- have a ball. I didn't even know that Iron Leaves learned Megahorn. I actually, I don't know what Iron Leaves learns because I never looked at it. That's Teller Ste- Te- Terra Stellar. Wow, this is Iron Leaves learns this a ton of really cool band. moves. <laughs> that, You're supposed I, to put the Kyrus like item on the Maridon. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. Mind. I really like this. This is really cool. No, this this, this is. So my thought with looking at this team, I don't think Mateo. Went and said, I want to play Maridon. This team screams, I want to play Iron Leaves. How do I make that? Happen? Yeah, how do I That's how do I enable this? <laughs> how do like... I make Iron Leaves good? <laughs> I mean, Mateo certainly found it out. Like, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. This team's really sick. So, I think one of the things that the Maridon teams do have an issue with, uh, people bringing in all of these. Uh, not just the ground types, but I think the grass types are a bigger issue with it. Uh, forcing you to click um, Draco Meteor is not as great. Um, so going and having overheat as a tech as a tech move and be life warp, so you can always switch into that overheat. So your Maridon can always threaten the grass types is a super is super cool. Along with the Terra Flying Terra Blast on the King Gambit as well as another option to really punish those uh, grass types, while Iron Leaves with Leaf Blade is able to punish the ground types that are trying to, like, stop Maridon from continuously clicking a very, very powerful boost in Electro Drift. So, yeah. I-, I see the vision, but, I, Jay, I do think, like, you hit the nail on the head that this team definitely looks like the early meta Maridon teams that weren't getting any real results uh, pre Indianapolis, and Mateo was able to take it to a top thirty-two at this event. So shout out to him. What else do we have? Um, let's see. There's there's a, uh, a going along that same uh, like thought process of like looking at high percentage like of win rate. Uh, there's another. Prankster, Taunt, and Encore Bond in this format in Grafii. Yo. Uh, this is a six and three Grafii team uh, at 125. Alexandro Gulini. Gulani? Glu- I'm sorry. I, I am not a It's okay. Just insult my people. Giuliani. <laughs> um, Alessandro Giuliani. Yeah. Yeah, there we uh, go. Thanks, Jay. Um, yeah, you are Thanks. very welcome. <laughs> I love I love how you spoke up and not the Italian. I just said you were discriminating <laughs> against me. So, in my humble opinion, as someone who used Grafii in draft league, uh, really kind of stinks. Yeah, really <laughs> good. Um, this team is like pretty standard Groudon stuff outside of Grafii, though. You have your Flutter main, your Incineroar, your Raging Bolt. It's like very similar to the Coridon teams that we're seeing yeah. uh, as well. You have your Urshi Dark, and then you have Grafii, which I don't really know what it's doing here. I think I mean, Scary like, Face. I, I, the, the, what, the only thing I can think of is it's you're immune to, like, since you're a normal type, you're immune to Calyrex Shadow. 
but it's not but like you have gunk shot that's like maybe the gunk like this is your mon to punish the caloric shadow after it's terrored into fairy because before the terror your, your gunk shots doing absolutely nothing do and, you know what uh, this is it's a flutter main counter just straight up built in flutter main it. counter it, no it, it is a flutter main counter it's, that's all i i think that that is its main thing you encore it into something you can terrify your grad on it, it now lo- no longer can hit anything on the field. You have a lot of Flutter weeks, like your own Flutter main, your Urshifu, your Raging Bolt, your Incineroar doesn't want to take a, you know, Moon Blast from Flutter main in the, su- in the sun, uh, especially yeah. if there's special attack booster. Uh, yeah, no, not no, so long that, that Fi, but that's kind of my best answer for you. <laughs> uh, it definitely, it, if, you're, if you're looking at it in that role and it's playing that role, it definitely makes sense. But again, like you're, the mom makes sense if it's doing that thing, but it's also a Grafii, and it might like maybe there might yeah. be something a little better to and, play like to do that role. And um, Fluttermane is also just like not the force that it was. I mean, it was no. fifth in this in this uh, in this uh, tournament, but like thirty percent usage. You know, it, that's not what it was previously. It's it's no. not on literally every team. Mm-hmm. And you also aren't being punished for not using it like you were in the past. It's it's just like every other very good mon at this point. Um, but it, it's not the metagame warping force it was this time last year. Uh, so what else do we have? Um, I did find a Raichu at 6 and 3. Um, I, you know, it, It's something that we had talked about, but I, that's like the only interesting part of the entire team. Uh, just a stash right you um yeah and then the last one i want to talk about uh this is 79th place again six and three that's kind of my cutoff anymore is just like looking at stuff um if it's has a winning record and you know it's like one win away from from day twoing i turned it stall is back on the table but like not full stall like this wait thing wait what place did you say 79. 79 79 there we go yo fizzy wizzy glizzy don dozo is is here baby yeah, oh, naked God. naked fissure dozo well next so tinglu so the 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 dozos with the yawn protect next to tinglu okay actually here's the thing that's that is a little surprising with this is that the tinglu doesn't have the trapping move in the uh in Santum, that's because the Eternal. I did this last week that I was like, when did Eternus learn Fire Spin? So yep. I shouldn't be too surprised. <laughs> it's been like um, two weeks since I've been on. You should have learned this. <laughs> <right now. laughs> but Eternus being your Fire Spin trapper and then your very large fish uh, clicking Fissure. Because... I'm upset that Ting Loot doesn't also have Fissure here. Me as well. <laughs> I mean, I think it makes sense that it doesn't... I mean, I, I like the set. I, I do think it makes sense, but... In a perfect world, every it, single Pokemon... We gotta go this, out, right? In a perfect world, every single Pokemon on this team has Fissure. But uh, we, we don't live in a perfect world. Man, can you imagine if Rillaboom got Fissure? No. No, I, I don't, and I don't want to. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a ROM hack to go design. <laughs> uh, but just, I'm, just so I'm joining the war on Big Stall on the side of Big Stall. Hell so, yeah, brother. Um, yeah, to, to all my big stallers, rise up. Yeah. Um, well, here's also, here's Nente for you, outside of Top Cut. That was actually the entirety of why I pulled it up, just because we were talking about Entei, and I wanted to make Angelo talk about Entei, and then I saw the Eternatus, I'm like, ooh! Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a fine mon, like, I do know, like, people are using it. It was um, A tier at least, Angelo, we all know it. All right. You you put that you put that in B. You I, you deserve you know, jail time. That was criminal. You got immediate karma for that. I you know I like that. That's <laughs> the best way to describe it. Is I got immediate karma for it. Even though again, it did exactly what I thought it was going to do immediately after the event. It, for that one weekend, I had a an entire cart bag on my face. It warped the entire meta around it. Okay, like the entire meta changed because of that one team, and that it never and it never returned. That was that was it's the caloric shadow effect. I mean, Calias just you know it came back because it is it, it there isn't other fire t- other Pokemon of its type that can do what it does, but um, 
to all my big stallers out there, rise up. Uh, and make sure you guys leave in the comments down below what, what big stall teams you're going to be bringing. <laughs> I do think like, this is definitely a stall team, but like the Life Orb Entei, the Urshifu, like there is a lot of damage on this team that isn't just like stalling you up with fire spin and yawn and clicking fissure uh these pokemon can actually do legitimate damage even the uh eternatus it has a super high base special attack stat that sludge bomb is going to chunk something that's weak to it um if you're going to go and terra terra fairy your calias to to uh get out of the urshifu weakness um, so you don't get, like, Wicked Blow to death. Like, that Sludge Bomb could do, like, 40-50% into you, and maybe that's, like, a two-hit KO, like, depending on things, could be a two-hit KO, or combined with the Ruination of Ting Lu, um, just handle it right then and there. So I do think, like, like for a big stall team, this this is... I, I don't hate it, <laughs> is the best thing I can say. Um, this this is not a... Him. Like, I don't hate it. <laughs> We have converted him to the cult of Big Stall. I can't wait for Angelo to pull up to a locals playing Eternatus Stall. If I do, and I know that many of the local my locals do listen to this podcast, you're allowed to just break my legs. Like, 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 like you can just stop me. Just, just bring him out to the bar and put him to pasture. Just old Angelo, <laughs> if if you do, I will pay you a non-zero amount of dollars. It's going to be a a single dollar. I did not say that. You're not wrong, but I didn't say that. <laughs> so before we head out, um, we are right. It, we are about to go right into NAIC. Uh, what restricted Pokemon do you guys think? I know. I know. We've kind of said like, which one do you think we're going? That's going to win. Uh, I think it's going to be Maridon again. I'm gonna go Calyrex Ice. I also am gonna go Cali Ice. I, I think it's it's time. It is it is definitely time, I believe. Yeah, I I wanna click I, I wanna say it's Cali I, but I, I do believe that it's an American event. But you're not a believer, I understand. No, I, 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 I've also am you know, not the hyper offense guy. Definitely not the hyper offense guy in this pod. But um so have you ever clicked Terra Electric Electro Drift? <laughs> Endorphins. It's... It's strong, it, but it, like it gets the people going. Trick room, glacial lands. It's no, that's, also, that's also a fun. It, that's also a fun button to press. Yeah, I I think I think it's it's time. It, it just I think people are gonna start sleeping on it, and it might be just time for it to to wake up and uh, okay, let the horse loose. Yeah. Uh, but, so, um, Mister Always Right, uh, take us out. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all the fun YouTube stuff. Leave in the comments below why I'm always right. All the times that I was right. All the great meta calls that I made. Gas me the F up in the comments, baby. I Hell love yeah. that. Um, make sure you guys go over to Twitter. Check out our Twitter at LR Lessons. Uh, spam Angela with all the times that I was right. Uh, you can come into the Discord sure. community. Wait, hold on, hold on. I also have access to that Twitter. I don't want all those notifications. Spam both of them, baby. Let them know why I'm always right. And you see, he said, I don't want access to all of those notifications because there's tons of times where I was right. Let him know. Come I check want, out the. I want. Make sure you tag Jay in all of those as well. I am open to it. I love getting hyped up. <laughs> and my phone is on do not disturb 90% of the time. So I, I won't get the notifications. Uh, come over to the community discord where you can also spam why I'm always right. Um, and then uh, check out the uh, discord and Patreon supporters links. Um, thank you to Johnny Bravo Sr. and Papa Switch for your support on Patreon. And shout out to Smeargle for your support on Discord. With that, that has been the episode. Cannot wait to be right again in a couple weeks. I will see you all later. Peace out. <laughs>